You know, I, <laughs> I really had to be reminded that today was Father's Day. <laughs> That's kind of bad, ain't it? I, was, I heard this, this comedian, he was saying, you know what? He said, Father's Day is like the 20th, he said, it's the 20th best holiday that there is. <laughs> he, said, he said, you got things like Arbor, Arbor Day that's ahead of Father's Day. Like, what, what is Arbor Day? <laughs> Groundhog Day is ahead of Father's Day. <laughs> then he said, now, let me, let me see how, how Mother's Day rang, he said. He said, Mother's Day rang because you got Christmas, then you got Mother's Day. He said, they got mothers next to Jesus. <laughs> That had me, had, had to get a little chuckle on that one, D. I hadn't heard it put that way before. Amen, amen. Well, once again, happy Father's Day to everyone. We thank God for all of you who are here with us. Those of you who chose to join us by um, virtual as well. Uh, we're going to get into this message. We're going to get done. We're going to be, I'm, I'm praying to give you some time back on this morning since we already begun. And we started our four, first point a couple of weeks ago. Amen? Amen. Amen. So let's pray. Father, we thank you on today for being so wonderful, such a great God. We know there is none like you. We pray now as we prepare to share your word with your people. We pray, God, that you would uh, gird us with your holy armor, cover us with your favor, the protective shield, continue, God, to deliver us from the enemy's hand. We pray that you will guide our, guard our hearts and our minds, guard our souls. Father, as the word of life is being planted in therein, we pray that it will take root and it will grow. And then once again, as always, we pray, Father, for just conviction of your Holy Spirit, Father, to preach your word, but also conviction in order to receive your word. And then clarity as we share your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We're going to get right to it, y'all. We're going to be done here in a few minutes. Um, we're, we're still in the book of, of Philippians. You don't have to stand. We're going to continue our, our message from Philippians, the uh, third chapter. And we went from the 17th verse to the fourth chapter, the first verse, uh, on a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Philippians 3.17. I'll read it once again to your hearing. Don't, have to, don't worry about standing. Though. Brethren, join us. Join in following my example. And note those who so walk as you have us for a pattern. For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, whose glory is in their shame, who set their mind on earthly things. For our citizenship is in heaven from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body that it might be conformed to his glorious body according to the working of which he is able to even to subdue all things to himself. Amen. Therefore, my beloved and longed for brethren, my, may jo my joy and crown so stand fast in the Lord beloved. Right. We were sharing with you about uh, a heavenly walk in the hellish world and yeah. how to have a heavenly walk in a hellish world. And yeah. we tried to share with you in the intro about what that really meant, you know, the difference between um, walking heavenly and also what this hellish world looks like. And, and so I wanted to share a few, uh, for a few minutes with you the remaining part of this message. We talked about the first point was that we should have a different walk. And I, 
And I shared with you verses 17 and 18, actually verse 17 through 19, to be honest with you. But verses um, where, where it says, For many walk of whom I have told you often, and now tell you, even weeping, that they are enemies of the cross of Christ. You know, and so Paul saying, but, you know, don't walk like them. You must have a different walk. And so in that passage, he was simply saying, hey, you know, as a believer, you must have a different walk. Not you should. You must have a different walk from those who are walking in this world. Your heavenly walk must look different than those who walk in the world. Amen. And so I tried, to, I tried to argue that point for a while. I gave you the concept of when it says, and note those who walk and talk about the word, know what that word note meant, it meant to spy out, to scout out, you know, to literally focus in on. Uh, and because when you spy out and focus out and focus in on, um, on, on things, then, then what happens is your focus began to get narrow. And as your focus gets narrow, then it's easier to walk, you know, to walk according to whatever it is you are actually focusing on. And so your walk, my walk in this world, it must be, it has to be a, a different walk. All right. And so and then I want to share with you when he even says, as you have us for a pattern, you know, for a pattern, you know, um, and that and so that pattern, we're going to go into the second point here, um, because not only should you have a different walk, he says you must there must be also what I call a dynamic witness. A dynamic witness. Hear what he says. It says, you have us for a pattern. You hear that? You see that right there? You, verse 17, you have us for a pattern. And, and, and I want to focus in on that term pattern because that term pattern is, 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 is another word which deals with a, like a stamp. So basically, you know, you know how you get, you know how if you guys, if you have a, well, they don't do it nowadays because because everything is technology technology now. But before you used to have that rubber that rubber pad, then you have a stamp, you know, and then whatever's on that stamp, you put in that on an ink pad, and then you literally stamp the pay, you know, paper with whatever it was. And so basically, what happened is whatever the, whatever was on that stamp, it couldn't get transferred to the paper until you put it on the ink pad. So what this so what this says is that he says you have us as that rubber stamp with the ink pad. You have us as a rubber stamp. You know the Holy Spirit is that ink pad, and you stamp yourself in that Holy Spirit, and whatever and whatever you put on the paper, that's that's what that's what that example is. So you have us as that example. So therefore, all you have to do is put all you have to do is is, is just is just dab the stamper in the ink and put it on the paper, and you'll have what's on the stamp. He said, and so basically, said, you have us like that. So basically, you should be able to imitate us just like that. Yeah. You should be able to imitate us the same way. That whatever we say, you say. Whatever we do, you do. Wherever we go, you should be going. Yeah. Yeah. In other words, our witness must be dynamic. What do I mean by that? Our witness must be life changing. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to stop right there because y'all didn't get that one. How do we know that? Listen to what he said here. You gotta, you gotta, that's why I love being able to read the word of God and just really just focus in on the word. Because listen to what it says here. We're going to take a slow read through this. I'm, I, I promise you, we're not going to be here for full 30 minutes. He says, listen to this. Brethren, join in following my example and note those who so walk as you have us for a pattern. For many walk of whom I have told you often, you know, they are enemies of the cross of Christ. Their destruction is the God of their belly, whose glory is in their shame. Then he says, who set their minds on earthly things. And so he says, he says, there is one way that they're walking, but how we, we're witnessing, we're trying to put our life before you as a witness. And when you watch how we do it. You have the ability now to be able to do it like we do it versus doing it like they do it because how we do it, we, God's going to get the glory about how they do it, he says. He says, they're, they're worshiping the God of their belly. They're worshiping the, whose glory is in their shame. In other words, their glory is in themselves. Their God is in their appetite. In other words, they worship whatever, they, whatever their appetite is fleshly. He says, but you don't have to worry about that because you have us as. A dynamic witness as a, as a man, as a, as a woman of God, a man of God, as a believer. Your witness should be dynamic. Your witness should be life-changing. 
You should be able to walk into a place. You should be able to hang with your friends. You should be able to hang with people. And when you walk away, they're like, man, I need to figure out what she, what is she doing right? What is he doing right? Because whatever he or she is doing right, I see something all over them. It really is not something, though. It really is someone. But I see something all over them, and I need what they have. See, your life. Your life has to be a dynamic witness. And y'all, let me tell you something. You don't, your, the witness is not, a, is not with your mouth. As a matter of fact, let me be clear. Your mouth gets in the way of your witness. Your mouth gets in the way of your witness. How do I know that? I'm glad you asked that question. That's a good question because what happens is your mouth gets in the way of the witness in a couple of different ways. One way it gets, in, it gets in the way of your witness is you, you're saying the right stuff, but you're doing the wrong thing. You, you, you got the church talk down pat, but the walk is a whole way different. So when, so people, when they see you coming, they say she, she says she's a Christian. He say he's a Christian. Because your mouth gets in the way of your witness. Yeah. Well, the mouth gets in the way of your witness the other way, too. Mm-hmm. Because you can have, you know, bad communication. I'm going to leave it like that. Jesus. You can have some bad communication coming out your mouth. Jesus. Well, let me see. Y'all didn't get that far. Okay. In other words, you, you can go around. You, you can be always negative, mm-hmm. speaking negative things. Uh-huh. But yet you, t- you say you're a believer. Yeah. Yeah. You can go around. And, and, and also cussing folk out. But you say you're a believer. <laughs> you can go around and you're all and you're always at, you're always if there's a positive word said, then you then you you respond with a negative word. Your, your mouth can get in the way of your witness even for your own self, because you can talk yourself down from where God has lifted you. So our, our mouth can get in the way of our witness because witnessing is not talking. Witnessing is not speaking. Witnessing is you literally walking, what, walking out what you are literally putting in. So my witness has everything to do with my walk. That's why your walk must be a different walk. Talking to a young man uh, this past week, you know, and he's trying to get some stuff going, and you know, and he, you know, he, he invited Zoe that he has the basketball thing they go on, you know, through the summertime. He said it's, it's, it's a lot of you know unsaved folk out there. They be doing the same, this some everything, and and I said, well, that's good. I said, I said, I have a problem with that. He said, you know, we had some church that had eventually got on board, but because it was, you know, because the music was loud and. You know, it wasn't the kind of music that they was list, used to listening to, and it wasn't the kind of language they were used to listening to. Some of the churches kind of just, nah, I don't think I want to deal with that. But, you know, I, I thought about that. And I said, well, yeah, I, I get that, but, you know, so it's not for me to go into that environment and talk about you going to hell because of what you're saying and how you're living. It's for me to go into that environment and be a presence in that environment. It's for me to go in that environment, and sometimes, guess what? Sister Bree, don't not even say a word. Just hang out. Just hang out. Just have conversation. I don't have to go in there like Mr. Mighty Pastor. Hey, all y'all heathens going to hell. I'm, I'm here to save you. No, you go in there because your 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 presence, your presence will do way more than your verbal conversation will do. And so I want you to understand that. Presence, being present somewhere means that, that, that there's an aura about you. And then that aura about you is the spirit that is on you. And all you have to do is walk in there. All you have to do is conduct yourself as a citizen of heaven. And you don't have to say one word. And guess what happens? Your witness becomes dynamic. He says, you got us for an example. Jesus told him, says, hey, go and be witnesses. Be, not, not go and do a whole bunch of talking. 
Yeah, yeah, you got to preach, you got to teach, but don't do, don't do a whole bunch of talking all the time. You got to be able to live what you preach and teach. That becomes the witness. Because that dynamic witness, it, it encompasses a few things. Because if you're submitted and surrendered into God, then when he's, he's going to release his spirit through you. So wherever you go, when you walk, you ain't got to say a word. Because he's going to come, he gonna come shining forth through you. That's why he says, hey, don't worry about them folk. You have us for an example. And that example is you must, you must be able to walk as a witness. You must be able to walk as one who has a dynamic, a life-changing witness. If you want to really understand how to have a heavenly walk in the hellish world. Because hell is all around us. But the good thing is the kingdom is sitting right down in the midst of it. Hallelujah. And you're part of the kingdom. Amen. The question is, are you shut up in the doors? Mm. Mm. We'll keep going. I promise you I'll get you out here before 30 minutes. It's almost, it's almost half time already. <laughs> so here when he says, you know, you have us for a pattern for many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that we there are enemies of the cross of Christ. And it goes on. So, yes, one, you must have a different walk. Secondly, you must have a dynamic witness. Your witness got to be done. It's got to be life changing, yeah. life transforming. And guess what? The only way that's going to be life changing and life transforming is if you allow the Holy Spirit to come up through you and then speak through you and you let the Christ in you reflect himself. Because you can't change it, but the Christ in you can. Yeah. The God in you can. Yeah. But you got to be submitted and surrendered to him yeah. to release his power in your life. Yeah. Okay, y'all like that right there? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, all right, all right. We'll keep on going, keep on going. Number three. And, and these, these, these last couple of points, I want to focus in on this one word here for our citizenship. Okay, our citizenship. Okay, the phrase, for our citizenship is in heaven. But listen to what he says for y'all, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, our, don't, don't miss this right. He says, for our citizenship is in heaven, for which we eagerly wait. That's deep, y'all. That's deep. Why would you eagerly wait for something, Sister Jack? Why would you, why, why would you eagerly wait for something? Huh? Because it's something, that, it's something that you really want to have. Yeah. And you, you, you can't wait for it because it's something that you, that you just can't wait to get. Yeah. So if you are eagerly waiting for that, all this other stuff don't mean nothing to you because you're focused on what you are eagerly anticipating. Uh -huh. Okay. And so he says, our citizenship, that, that term citizenship, I want, you to, I want you to share, it means a couple of things, and I'm going to finish, I'll finish with these last couple of points. Here he says, we said that that term citizenship, understand, the third point is this, that you must have what we call distinguishable works. All right. Citizenship is in heaven, from which we eagerly wait. What am I talking about? Because that term citizenship, it means also the term Conduct. It, it, it's what when sometimes you see our conduct is in heaven. It's that same term that they use citizenship. In, our conduct, how we do things. Right, right, right. So your conduct should be heavenly conduct. Amen. Amen. And if your conduct is heavenly conduct in a hellish world, then it will be distinguished from other stuff that you do. Your works are now distinguishable because you are actually performing the work of heaven and not as you live in the world of hell. And the hellish works don't match up to the, what we call the heavenly works because the heavenly works are coming from heaven and therefore they're going to be different works than from the works on, in hell. Uh -huh. let, me see, let me see if I can make this a little bit more plain. So when you, when you do stuff in life, when you do stuff, uh, uh, when we talk about the works or the distinguishable works, then, then what you, as you are called, remember I told you, you are called to what? You are called unto good works. 
Because as you're called unto good works, then your good works are being measured by the Savior in the heaven. And so as you are working your good works, and the only way it's a good work is if you actually walk in obedience to what he has told you to do. I can't do what Brother Isaac was called to do. I can't do what Sister Monique was called to do. I can't do what First Aid was called to do. That's not good works. It may look good in people's eyes, but a good work is when you work according to and obediently with what has been told you and put on your plate to do what God has called you to do for your purpose and for his glory. That's a good work. Giving somebody a thousand dollars because it needs some help on their rent, that's good thing. That's a good thing to do. If the Lord didn't tell you to do that, that's just a good thing to do. But if the Lord told you to give that person the, their rent money because, you no, know, because he has told you to do it, and, and, and you do that, that's a good work because God has told you and called you to do just that. If God has called me, if God has called me uh, uh, to sing, but yet I don't sing, Deacon Hawk, and I, and I try to preach, preaching is a good thing to do. But it's not a good work in, in God's book, not, not for me, because he didn't call me to do that. He called me to do this. Yeah. What has God called you to do? Yeah. In other words, what are you not doing what he, has called you, what he has called you to do? And then what are you doing what he has called you not to do? That's why I don't, that's why I don't get jealous of nobody. I, I don't have no time for it, Sister Gwen, because I'm too busy trying to figure out what is it that God has called me to do. Because at the end of it all, when I stand before Christ, and you see it here, when I stand before Christ, he's going to call me. He's going to say, hey, I called you to do A through Z. Guess what? You took Brother Hawk's stuff and you did his A through Z and you left your A through Z alone. Uh, I, I can't, I, you have no works that you are able to pile up here. And so you're going to make it in just barely by your bottom parts, hind, your hind parts smoking. You're going to just barely make it in, but you will not receive reward because you've done some, what, what somebody else was supposed to do and not what I told you to do. That's good works. Yeah. Yeah. Am I missing y'all? Am, am, I, am I losing y'all? Yeah. So what has God called you to do? Because whatever he's called you to do, that's, those are distinguishable works, not just to man, but also to God. Remember, God is your audience first. Yeah. I'm going to say it one more time. God is your audience first. Yeah. God don't care what you do on a daily basis if it is not what he's told you to do. Right. God is concerned about what he's called you to do. Yeah. Yeah. And God ain't going to accept no, no excuse. Well, I didn't like so-and-so. So-and-so made me mad. I just died. Uh, no, no, no. There are no excuses when it comes to God. Because whatever he's called you to, that's his expectation of you. That's why I, I'm not concerned anymore being hawk about what people say about what I do or not do outside these walls. Because as long as I'm doing what I believe God has called me to do, because ain't none of y'all going to be standing next to me, Sister Cassandra. Ain't none of them going to be standing next to me when God start ticking off that list. Your works are distinguishable because God is distinguishing them, not because man is distinguishing them. Your works are distinguishable works because you are in the family of God. You are in the citizenship. You are in the community of God. You are in the kingdom, and he's called you to do a certain work, and he has set those works apart, and now those works are distinguishable in his eyes. Too many of us are too concerned about what works happen in man's eyes. I used to be like that, Andy V. I did. When I was young in ministry, I used to be like that. What is so-and-so going to think about me? What's so I, I, even, you know, I even pondered sometimes if I should try to hoop or not, Sister Rachel. Yeah. Be because, 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 you know, the, the preacher was talking about, man, you, you, you need to hoop. You need to, no, no. And I started pondering that. I didn't ponder for long, though. <laughs> when I got an answer from the Lord, <laughs> Deacon Greg, I knew which way to go. Yeah. He says, our citizenship is in heaven. So in other words, our works are distinguishable to God. Yeah. He knows the works he has called you to. Yeah. And if you don't perform those works, 
that's going to be on you and it'll be between you and him. And guess what? There's a day of reckoning that we all have to go. So not only is it conduct, the distinguished work, and I'm, I'm done at this last one. You know, he says our citizenship is in, our citizenship is in heaven. Um, that term citizenship also means conversation. Conversation. So the last point I'm done is in order for you to be able to live, uh, have a heavenly walk in the hellish world, one, have a different walk. Two, dynamic witness. Three, have this th- distinguishable works in God's eyes. And that simply means do what God has told you to do. Don't worry about nobody else stuff. And then lastly, understand the divine word in your life. Understand the divine word in your life. He says, our citizenship is in heaven. That word citizenship is another word for conversation. It's another word for conversation. It's also another word for community. Wow. So there's a different conversation that needs to be had in, in heaven. And y'all, we walk, on, we walk in heaven on earth. So we should have, not, not only are we given divine words, we should also speak divine words. We speak what we are given. And you, you, know your, you know that word because you read your word. You know that word because you study your word. You know that word because you meditate on that word. You know your word because you pray that word. You know your word because you apply that word. So if you, if you don't read, study, pray, meditate, and apply the word, you don't know the word. And then, so therefore, when the divine word comes down, it stops. It can't go no further because you can't recognize it. So even though the divine word is spoken to you, you can't speak a divine word to nobody else because you don't know what the divine word is because you can't recognize the divine word. He says our citizenship is in heaven. Our conversation is in heaven. Our communication is in heaven. Our conduct is in heaven. Our community is in heaven. It just happens to be on earth. Receive that divine word, but then you have to release that divine word. Don't you know God put you in places so that you can release his divine word to somebody else? But you so stuck on you and sometimes so stuck on stupid that you don't realize that God has put you in a place to be able to to be able to release the divine word that you receive from him. That is not your word. It's somebody else. And he has determined that you going to be in the right place to give the right word from heaven because it's a heavenly conversation. I know, I know we come to service and we, we have a great time, praise and you know, worship and all that stuff and you know and, and you know and you know and just you know kicking it and you know, I just we, we have a good time. That's all great, y'all. And yeah, you know, and, and just so you understand that the church is for the is for the call of Christ. In other words, when you come here, it is for me to, to deposit into you what you need when you go outside these doors so that when you hear a divine word, you can then and, and receive it, you can release a divine word because this is a hospital. I am here to operate on you. I'm here to share the word with you so that you, you can grow where you need to grow so that you can then walk out of these doors and do what you need to do because we are a church, we are a community, we are of the kingdom of God. And so when you walk out these doors, your communication, your conduct, your conversation, your community has got to be one of God, one of the kingdom. Y'all got to quit letting all this craziness dictate what you say and do. I'm done, y'all, but I was was chuckling because I was was being teased again today because... You know, I was out of, I was, I was Juneteenth day. <laughs> and you know, I was, I was, I was, you know, volunteering there and a fight, you know, almost broke out. And so I'm in the middle of the fight. I'm in the middle of trying to break, trying to, you know, break it up. And so <laughs> somebody say, he said, 
Man, lately, here lately, man, you've been in the middle of a lot of fights. <laughs> and I figured, I, I guess, I say, well, that's what, that's what the Lord just, par- I guess I just, I guess I what, parachuted into the middle of the fight because he needed the kingdom to be there to be able to help get things straight, get things together, right? <laughs> And so literally, I'm trying to get one dude to just bring it down a few notches, you know, while this other dude's still, you know, still, you know, just going off. And it's like, dude, you know, and so if I would have got riled up and started, you know, then he would have got even more riled up. And so, but what happened is, is I kept, and, and I kept, I kept eyeing, I kept looking in his eyes, and I kept saying, bring it down, man, you need to bring it down, right? And I, I, I wherever he moved, I can move him, you need to bring it down. I move back over, you need to, now, this, now he's like two times my size, right? You need to bring it down, you need to bring it down. What happened? At, now, mind you, after about maybe 10 minutes, he did. But you know why he did? Because he finally, after he got, after the anger got out of his eyes, he recognized who I was. That's all, he just recognized who I was. Oh, I'm sorry, Pastor Man, but so and so, and I, I, I get it, I get it, but, but, but you got to bring it down. But he didn't recognize me as Pastor first because his eyes were, his eyes were fire. But what he did, he must have recognized was there was a spirit around me that caused him to not, to not breach and go any further because of what was going on. Yeah. Y'all, you gotta say sometimes just your being in place, that's all that matters. Yeah. Yeah. And we mess it up many times because we get to saying stuff that we ought not be saying many, many times. God just wants you there in the midst and in the middle to make sure yeah. that his presence is felt. Yeah. He don't want you there to be the one to help cuss him out. I'm done. I'm done. But we need to understand that we, as believers, we must have a heavenly walk. Because this world is a world full of hell. And it's going to get worse. And the question is, is your walk different? Is your witness dynamic? Are your works distinguishable? And are your words divine? Because it all comes from him. It all comes from him. This world, is, this world is going to get worse before it gets better. But you can get better while the world gets worse. Amen? Amen? 